Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. How are you guys today? It is Carolyn Benny. I am your Australian Stampin' Up! demonstrator and it is Friday and I'm back. It's Friday and I'm here. <laughs> I haven't been able to do a Friday Facebook Live for weeks and I'm excited to be finally able to do that with you guys today so I hope that as you come on in you'll say hello tell me where you're watching from tell me what you're doing I want to hear from you guys because I haven't been able to hear from you for ages hey Andre hey from New Zealand how are you I'm so glad that there's people watching I didn't know whether everyone would go away when I wasn't doing this every week so Hey April from Iowa. Hey Michelle, how are you? I'm a bit excited to see everybody. But there, um, the thing is, is because I haven't done this in a number of weeks. I mean, I did do some on Saturdays. I don't know if you caught those. Um, but I haven't done this for a number of weeks. So I could be rusty. And there could be lots of Carolyn-isms, Carolyn accidents. So... Um, you have to hold my hand. Hey Lorraine, hey T, how are you? Gosh, it's lovely to see so many friendly Stampin' Up! enthusiasts here. So today, I should have done my research a little bit because um, I'm not quite sure what this technique's called. I'm sure it's got a name, right? Because everything has a proper name. But um, hey Carrie, how are you? Hey Mel, how are you? Lovely to see you too. I know I'm not really seeing you, but like I see your little avatar. Um, so it, I'm kind of calling it like a split panel because that's what it is, right? That's as easy as I can explain it. So this is the card that we're going to be making today. It's a little split panel. It's got some colouring. It's got my Stampin' Blends have come out to play. Hey Karen, how are you? Um, so I thought that might be fun. Ease me back into it because you know what, when you stop doing something for a little while, it's like that first day back from school after the school holidays, you're kind of a little bit nervous. So I'm a little bit nervous. Not really. A little bit. Um, so let's play, shall we? Who wants to colour today? There's, I don't know, there's always a good time to colour, right? Put up your hand if you like to colour. Okay, I'm going to turn you guys over, plug in my earbud, get my computer sorted. So if this is the time to have your cup of, you know, your little sips of coffee or something while you're waiting for the calamity that is uh, Carolyn change. See, I told you, like it's a calamity. Okay, so let me just get this sorted. I've got my 80s music blaring. When I say blaring, it's like it's just quiet. But um, I've got my 80s music on because my 90s radio station, which I was loving, disappeared. I'm very disappointed about that. I think it's been replaced by Elf Radio. Does anyone listen to digital radio like I do? So Elf Radio happens about this time of the year because Christmas is coming. <laughs> which I think is hilarious because they have a radio station that's dedicated to Christmas. Anyways. Hey Elizabeth, how are you? Oh, thank you. Hey. I was doing some work at um, a primary school and it, it kind of took over. So, but I'm back now. The, um, the lady I was filling in for has come back from holidays, so I had to leave all the little reception kids. And you know, I kind of fell in love with them a little bit, those little cuties. Not all of them. <laughs> Most of them. Okay, so I'm just going to get up my video. Who knew I'd like kids, hey? Well, there you go. You learn something new all the time. Oh, I've got to turn this baby over. Good morning, Deb. Morning, Julie. How are you, sweets? 
Now let me just, because someone's going to get grumpy at me real soon because I haven't got this flipped. And I don't want you guys to get grumpy. It's a beautiful morning here in the Adelaide Hills. It is always lovely here in paradise. Uh, it's actually not. It's um, often cold and raining, but um, let's just say it's always lovely. Okay, let's have a check. Let's check out this card and get cl up close and personal and see what we can do. Hey, Stephanie. Good evening from Iowa. Trick or treating tonight. Oh, seriously? Is that the day? It's wow. I, you know what, like in Australia, Stephanie, we, we don't really, we don't really celebrate Halloween as much here as you guys do um, in the States. And it's a bit of a shame because um, I actually think I would go nuts for Halloween. Not because of the scary stuff, but because of all the like cute little things and cards that you guys make and it's lots of fun um, and I'm all about that but uh, I hope you guys have a fabulous time hey Glenda how are you goodness me have we've got some lovely lovely beautiful people coming in and chatting with me today maybe I should go away more often <laughs> I don't know is that, is that the way that you do it? You go, you go away and then people will love you more. All right. So here is our card. It's like, a, like I said, I'm sure this has got a proper technical name. And um, if um, Wendy comes on, she will tell me what it is because she is like my personal assistant when it comes to Facebook Live. She knows, she fills in my gaps. <laughs> and there are so many. When you're watching a Carolyn video, it's not always for the perfection. You just kind of get what you get. Um, it's daylight saving in Sydney now. It's also daylight saving here, Julie. So we should be, should still be. Um, oh, you would miss me. Oh, Lorraine, honestly, I just want to package you up. You're so gorgeous. Okay, so here we go. Um, this little piggy is adorable and it comes from this stamp set called this little piggy ironically enough um, and it's in the annual catalog if you check out our annual catalog if you haven't already well that's just nuts um, the Stampin' Up! annual catalog it runs until I should know this off the top of my head runs until the end of May May June yep end of May um, things do start selling out from it and we never know what is going to be gone for good so if you like something don't wait till the end there won't be a great deal of discounts because that's not the way Stampin' Up! rolls um, so don't wait until the end because your stamps that you want might not be there anymore so um, this one has been an absolute favourite for many many people this little piggy I love it because I can color and you know I love to color hey Julie you missed the Facebook lives oh you're a sweetheart thank you that's kind sometimes I wonder if anybody's watching but then you guys come in and you're really kind so now I don't need to wonder so yeah so check that stamp set out it is relatively a cheap one in my opinion $35 for the, um, the ones that cling to the blocks, which is what I like to use. Um, it's kind of a bit of an all-rounder. If you don't like colouring, gasp, but if you don't like colouring, you could actually stamp it onto pattern paper and just cut it out, and it would be a really cute pattern pig, look like a bit of a patchwork pig. Um, so you don't need to colour, but, you know, who wouldn't want to? So we're using that stamp set today. We're also using the Itty Bitty Greetings. Now, if you do not have an, a greetings stamp set, this comes in a double stamps, stamps, I would strongly suggest this is the way to go. We used to have a stamp set called Tiny, Tiny something. 
Mm, someone's going to help me with that one. And it was an absolute favourite, stuck around for years. They, they got rid of this one and they've got this one now called Itty Bitty Greetings. Teeny Tiny Sentiments, that's what it was called. They've got this one at Itty Bitty Greetings. It is an all-rounder. It is a must-have because it's got everything. Um, and they're just perfect for every occasion. This one is a little bit more expensible. I know that's not a real word. It's a Carolyn word. Um, but it's worth it because how many – you get 32 stamps, which means you get 32 greetings, which pretty much is if you are just wanting like a one-stop shop, teeny tiny wishes if you want um, a one-stop shop for all of your greetings then you've kind of got it in this one all right so it's worth the investment again in the annual catalog you can purchase all of your stampin up needs with me via my online shop this is the little sales pitch um, if you're here in Australia and you and I'm your demonstrator of choice which I hope I am so um, the other way is if you'd like to become a demonstrator, which doesn't mean you have to do this kind of thing. It just means you want to get 20% discount on all your purchases. Um, then if you would like to do that, then I'd love you to join my beautiful team called the Midnight Inklings because they are the most awesome. And, um, and that's the end of that. All right, let's get on to colouring, shall we? Okay, so let me just get myself sorted I've got my coffee in my Starbucks cup today I'm sporting I can't tilt it because that would be bad it's full of coffee um, but it's my Canada cup so that's going to keep me happy I've got my Stamparatus here and it's loaded up already with my little piggy that I want to use I have got a piece of thick cardstock. It is the thick white cardstock. It is the one, the cardstock that I personally prefer to use when I'm doing um, colouring with my stamping blends. Um, when you're stamping and colouring with your stamping blends, you will want to use Memento ink, not... Um, stays on or anything like that because Memento is what is recommended to use with stamping blends. So just give that a bit of a smooch like so. Beautiful. Now I am going to take that out and I'm going to keep the stamp still exactly in the stamping blends where it is because I might want to go over the top of it in a little while again just to strengthen the colour. I've got a little bit of grid paper, which I actually got big coffee stain all over. You finally bought the Itty Bitty Sentiments and it's great. Yes, I agree, Julie. It is, um, it is a corker. So I would definitely recommend. These are the colours that we're going to use today. Now I know, gasp, I'm using a retired colour. I need to get the new pink for my blends. Um, but I don't have it yet, so it needs to go on my wish list immediately because I'm still using it, which for a demonstrator is naughty, naughty, but, um, oh well, no one, don't dob on me, will you guys? <laughs> I'm only joking, it's not illegal, I'm not breaking any laws, but, um, you know, the stamp and police might come out. So I'm using the light pink pirouette and the dark pink pirouette, which are retired, so you can't get those, but there is a nice pink that's replaced in the catalogue. Um, so you can go and get that instead, which is what I'll be doing shortly. Uh, then we've got the light crumb cake and the dark crumb cake. Crumb cake is my most favourite colour in the whole world. It's the bizarrest colour, I suppose, to have as a favourite, but it is. That's my favourite. I can't help it. That's what it is. And then we've got... Light Smoky Slate, which is an all-rounder. You must have it. If you have a stamping blends, you must have it. You're, oh, my secret is safe, Lorraine. <laughs> uh, yes. Anyways, I've kind of, I feel like maybe I shouldn't have had my second coffee already this morning because I might be a little bit crazy. 
Okay, let's start. Okay, so I want to take you through the process that I do with my colouring. If you've watched my colouring before, you'll, um, you'll know that this is the way I, I roll, but um, let's just do it again together, shall we? So I've got my crumb cake, my light crumb cake. I did, here's a, here's a couple of little, there's another version with the piggy uh, in, in pink there, and I actually did some glitter on his wings which I think is cute, but for some reason I just really love the crumb cake piggy. So you could choose whichever way you like to go. Ah um, oh yes, now Julie's saying that the classic label punch also works super well with this stamp set too. That is a good tip. I like that tip. All right, so let's make a start with the colouring. I like, I start with the lightest colour first and I use the brush end of the crumb cake. So I like, when I'm doing large areas, I prefer to use the brush end. There's a brush end and there's more of a, what do they call the other end? Like a, someone's going to help me, like a ball tip, not a ball tip. Anyways, so you're just going to, the thing that people get really worried about with colouring is that it has to be perfect. It doesn't really have to be perfect. You just, especially with the stamp and Blends, because they even out on their own, you don't really need to do anything super special with the colouring because unlike textures, which do not even out, they just look like a big, you know, scratchy mess. Uh, unless you just put so much colour down on the paper. With the Stampin' Blends, because of the alcohol in them, they kind of just, like the colour evens out. It looks lovely and flat. And usually it does take a couple of goes with your colour over the top. But you can see there already that bullet end. Mel's helped me out. Thank you, Mel. See, that's why you guys have to come and help me. See, that's just one go. And it's not perfect, but it's pretty evened out, okay? So, oh, thank you for sharing, Teresa. You are a champion. Okay, so I've just gone over that with my first crumb cake in light. Now I'm going to get my darker crumb cake. And I'm going to pop in some shading. And I'm also... Um, It'll, I'll then come back with my lighter crumb cake. So I'm first of all, the, the ear behind here, I just want to put a little bit of darker colour in. Here underneath, so I'm just assuming that the sun is higher. Now I'm going to cut this little piggy out. So even though I'm being fairly particular about staying in the lines, when you're cutting out an image, you probably really don't have to be, do you? You could probably go out of the lines and it's not going to matter. So don't freak out about that if you feel like you've not got a super steady hand. So I'm just popping in some dark shading and here under his ear. So anywhere I think that there would be a little bit of shading, um, you can just pop that in with a darker one and then come back in with your light blend your light your lighter color so this is the light crumb cake again and I'm starting inside the darker color and I'm blending up now can you see how there's not such a harsh line there now it's still darker but that harsh line has now disappeared and also I'm starting in the dark again and coming down. And because it's got like a round little belly, when you look at a circular object, often the centre part is um, has got like a little circle. So that's kind of what I'm doing here as I'm just coming in with these little cute bottom and I'm not colouring all the way in because I want that to be a little bit lighter. Here, let's just blend out this colour here as well, like so. And we are almost, like that is how quick that process is. Super quick. Oh, I forgot to do his tail. 
like so. Nothing has to be perfect. You just want to have fun, okay? Now I'm going to do the other end, which someone's now given me the information that um, it was the bullet end. Hey, Kathy, thank you. Thank you for sharing my video. It's always much more fun when people see it live. So that's, that's great. Okay, so now I'm just going to give a little bit of definition there on his ear as well. I think that's looking pretty good. What do you think? It's kind of a little bit hard to get the full effect yet. But let me bring that up so you can see. So that's kind of so far. So far, so good. Pretty easy. Pretty fast. Now I've got some of my illegal pink pirouette. I'm going to do his nose. We're assuming it's a he. Could be a she, actually. And then little feet I decided to do in pink too. And then actually the sentiment does say she believes she could. So it is a, a real girl picky. Now I'm going to pop a little rosy cheek. Because I feel that even though pigs do not have rosy cheeks, that it's kind of fun to, to give rosy cheeks. And now I will colour in a little bit of the wings. Now I've just decided to not do the whole, and this is the dark pink again, dark pink pirouette. I decided I wouldn't actually do the whole wing in a solid colour. I thought I'd just do a little bit. So there we go. So far so good. Bring in the lighter colour. I really, more often than not, will use both the light and the dark colour when I'm colouring. Very rarely I just use one. So that's why the Stampin' Blends are sold in pairs to get this blend effect, this light and dark shading effect. So you can buy them in the pairs or you can buy them individually. Say, for instance, you use one colour more than the others, you can just purchase um, you know, one later on down the track even just to top up. So now I'll just, I'm just fluffing now. I'm just adding just a little bit of darker pink again. Oh, I forgot, in his ear is a little bit of darker pink, like that. And that's just why I love the crumb cake and the pink together. They look so nice together. Now, if you're ever thinking, oh, that pink in his ear, it just looks a bit too, like a little bit too strong in the one spot, you can actually come back in with your lighter shade and go over the top and it will blend it out a little bit. It will soften it a little bit. So I'm just going to blend it out a little bit and it softens it. I could do the same with his little blush on his um, cheek but I think I actually quite like that strong blush so what do you think do you like that now let me show you what I do with the light gray smoky slate which I said before to you is my absolute you know you've got to invest in the light gray and I use it for just to enhance my shading you could leave your coloring just like that but I think that uh, the trick that I play with people who think, oh, Carolyn, you're an amazing, you, your, your colouring is better than what I could do. It's really not. I just trick you guys because what I do is I remember to always add some grey and that is, that is the trick. If you add the grey, you, your colouring just goes up another notch because it adds extra shading and you need that extra shading so there you go you know all my tricks now and I'm just going to add a little bit under the wings and if you're ever thinking uh, I've gone too far you can just get your dark crumb cake and even it out your light crumb cake and even it out I'm going to pop a little bit under little schnout there we go so I think that's pretty good always go back in and top up your darkest point 
darken that out. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. What you can now do is if you feel like you've lost some of the definition on your stamped image, you can then get your Stamparatus back in and go back over it again. And this is the beauty of having a positioning tool is that it stays exactly where you want it to be. And then you can come back in and stamp over the top of it and it darkens up those original lines again that you've been colouring over the top of that might have been a little bit blurry. So it just makes takes it up, bumps it up to that next level. Now you need to get your stamp and snips. We sell some really lovely scissors, perfect for chopping out everything perfectly. <clears throat> perfect for chopping everything out perfectly. Carolyn, you've done it again. The English language. Okay, so and then you're going to snip that out. Now you could watch me do that, but that would be super boring. So I've already done that. So here we've got one that I have prepared earlier. Ta -da! Okay, so let's look at the part of the split, the split card part of the card. Okay. Now, what have I got? I have got a piece of a half piece of the thick whisper white cardstock because I'm obsessed with thick whisper white. I have got a piece of it's five centimeters long by 10 uh, 14.8 centimeters wide of this designer series paper it's got that one on the back it is called um, twinkle twinkle little star it's from the annual catalog as well and it's super cute it's got lots of different sort of star patterns on it it's got some really soft colors super nice the one I'm particularly drawn to is this Milky Way pattern which is adorable this pack um, it actually comes in 12 inch by 12 inch sheets but I've cut mine down and it's $19.25 in the annual catalogue you get uh, 12 sheets six different styles and they're double-sided so there's lots and lots to play with there so I've already cut my piece down I've also lost my piece of cardstock that I wanted hey where are you all right I'll get that one excuse me leaning in front of you right so I've um, as I said to you guys before I think I've cut down a lot of card fronts there we go so I have them on hand and prepared, which is good when you forget to do it before a Facebook Live. So I've got my card base, but I've also got an additional panel for the top, which is exactly the same size as the front of my card base. So that's going to fit over the top of it perfectly. So it's 10 and a half centimetres by 14.8. I'm going to get my Stampin' Cutter trimmer can't remember what it's called exactly and I'm slight look how grubby it is Carolyn that's grubby no don't know where my little cleaner is I'll get it in a minute anyway keep yours cleaner than mine because mine's grubby um and I'm just going to slide it in from one side I'm sliding it across to two and a half centimeters here and I'm going to trim and then I'm going to keep sliding this across to another two and a half centimeters and I'm going to trim. So what you're left with is these three pieces. Okay. So that would be your full card front. But now I'm going to discard this piece. I can use this for so many things. So don't throw it away, whatever you do. These are great for sentiments. So, and then I'm left with this, right? So now I want to just put a little sentiment here on this part of the card. Now I wanted to share with you a little thing that I've been doing lately with my Stamparatus. So I'll take that window out and I'm going to put this one in. Um, 
Right, so now I've used my teeny tiny sentiments, but what I find can be still a little bit tricky is with the sentiments, making sure they're straight. So I suppose, I mean, no. So if you just want to make it straight and you've got your card here and you're still not sure if you've placed your stamp image on it in a straight way then what I've found that I had is we used to sell these back in the day you don't need exactly this but we used to sell these to go on our blocks they were this it's just clear plastic with a grid image on it and I'm pretty sure you could photocopy like a grid image on some clear plastic or some acetate we used to do that back when we would use projectors and stuff. Can we still do that? Can someone tell me? But if you just got some acetate and even drew a grid on it with a, um, with a Sharpie, you could do that too. But if you then lay it over your image, then you can get your stamp and just kind of make sure it's straight like so and in the right spot I mean you can't see exactly but having that line on it kind of helps you know it helps you kind of work out that it's not oh that was my hair sorry guys I didn't know I was that far over so you can kind of work it out even you could stamp on it and then rub it off you could do that too couldn't you so that's just my little tip with getting the sentiments straight using a little bit of grid on some clear acetate or if you've still got some of those stickers that we used to use on our blocks you could do that too like I did I didn't even have to draw anything on acetate so that's made my sentiments super straight which I'm very happy about and because I hate not having my sentiments straight and now we're ready to put this baby together so I've got my short piece my stamp sentiment piece using the itty bitties I'm calling it teeny tinies and I've got my other bit okay yes there we go the position sheets from Stamford oh. so um there we go. So let me lay lay it on top for you. I've got, oh, I think I might need to trim this piece down. It wasn't trimmed all the way. I've got that bit. That, oh, <laughs> do you think that maybe I've had a glue problem? <laughs> I think I might have had a glue problem. All right, let's get this stuck on. So I kind of know where this needs to go. You could measure it using your um, grid paper perfectly but you know I'm not really so into perfect measuring so I will just do this free eye eyeballing it and mine's gone off the edge but I will fix that okay so there's the first piece down and then I'll just trim this while I think about it. Good eye. So that bit goes straight on with some glue. Now I've got our long foam adhesive sheets, strips, which is like dimensionals, but they are long. And I'm just going to pop some of these down. What have I got here? I love that you don't have to use a million dimensionals. You can just use these strips. So handy. Do you have these already? You should. Because it'll make your life easy. So I'm, you could go all the way around. You could do a square. But I don't think that's necessary. I think that you could just do... this 
Oh, the positioning sheet from the stamp and majig dip. Gosh, you're clever, aren't you? That's a great idea. That has grid on it, doesn't it? Does it? No, it doesn't have grid on it. Have I lost the plot, Deb? Okay, let me see. Now, there we go. So that is like so. Okay, so let's see what we can do about this. Right, this is the, you've got to eyeball it a little bit more. No, but you could draw on it, Deb says. You could, you could draw on it. Okay, super easy. Right, now I like to turn it upside down, lay this piece flat, and then that way I know that it will definitely be straight, right? That's the idea. Let's see if it works. Yes, success. It's straight, it's all in the right spot, all right? Sometimes I have a win. Sometimes when I'm live, things don't go bad. Okay, a bit more stickiness. Now I'll do this on this side. Nice and straight. You know that your table is straight, so you don't even need to freak out about placement. There we go. Oh, love it. Now we have our little piggy, and we know that he needs to kind of straddle over this bit, and the absolute perfect depth is... is a little piece of our thin strip. We know that's exactly the right height. And here he goes. Jumping into the Milky Way. And there we are. Yay! There is our little piggy. So adorable. On this one here, the only difference is, um, hey, Tanya, how are you going? Um, lovely that you could join us here. Um, I've put a little bit of our fine tip glue pen. I did a little bit on the wings and on his little snout and on his trotters just so it, shot, it had a little bit of shimmer to it. You could use the shimmer pen as well. As if you didn't want to go um, to the glue um, you could put a little bit of glitter like I did here this little dude had glitter with glue on the wings which I thought was adorable too my middle son has been trying to steal that from me for the last few weeks but I also made a few others so I thought you might like to see some other variations of the same card because I know you guys do you like to see stuff, right? So here is this little one here, all using the same designer series paper because it's adorable and you want some. So this that's a little another little cute pig from the set. Here we've got this one again, adorable little piggies from the set. Let me see if I can open this up. And then here is this one, which I just thought was just the sweet, sweetest, sweetest. Um, happy little birthday with a little flower. So I stamped, actually stamped that onto the panel like so. And I did a little bit of extra colouring on that one. So that's really fun too. And that's how it sits. So what do you think? Do you like these little piggies? Do you like that designer series paper? That's kind of... I think it's a little bit different way of using it. I think people probably consider it to be a baby paper, but I actually think that it is a bit more versatile than that. So I hope that you have loved this, enjoyed it, enjoyed just an easy colouring tutorial and you get your colouring blends out or you head to my shop and, and purchase some, purchase all of them. So let me turn you guys over. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> so that was 
that was our Facebook Live for this morning. I I'm so pleased that you could join me again. I'm happy to be back. I will be back. Well, next week I can't see why not, but you know, life happens. But I'm certainly happy to be back on my regular pause. I'll make sure I take some photos of these cards and um, we're not going on stage next week, are we? It's not next week, is it the week after? Hmm. I'm confused. I've lost days here. But anyway, if you're going to on stage, if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you're going to Melbourne, I will see you in Melbourne. I'm making swaps. So if... I'm not making many swaps. It's the week after. Thank you, Lorraine. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm make, not making many swaps. I think I'm making like 20. So if you see me and you want one of my swaps, please come up to me and grab a swap because I want to swap with you guys. Um, so please do. I don't normally make swaps and for some ridiculous reason. <laughs> for some crazy reason, I thought I'm going to make some swaps because I want to experience all the swapping again. I haven't done that in such a long time. So, um, oh, it's lovely to see you too, Susan. Oh, you're going to have to come up and get me one really... Come and grab me, Mel, and come and grab me, um, Lorraine, because, you know, I'm like I'm a ditherer, so you need to grab me and grab one of those swaps. Um, I'll, I'll be excited to chat to everybody. So, because you, you know what I look like. It's, it's tricky, you know. I, you know what I look like, but I don't always know what you guys look like other than your little cute little cat photo avatars. So if you're going to Brisbane, have a fabulous time there. If you are going anywhere in the world um, for on stage, have a fabulous time. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, send me a message because being part of the Stampin' Up! family is awesome. I will see you guys next week. I will take some photos of these cards and throw them up on my blog later on, um, probably this evening. And I will see you guys again on Friday.